Uh, you often hear that uh, there are about 20 elephants in South Africa, and you now wonder how do the people count uh, the number of certain animals when the animals are living in the wild. So today's video we're gonna looking we're gonna be looking at uh, determining the population size. So how do we actually know the size of a population? How do we know how many? species we have in a population so there are certain techniques that are used to count species of a population so those techniques will all depend on the type of population and will also depend on the size of the population so uh, we can have two types of techniques to count the population or to count the species there is a there is direct counting techniques and indirect counting techniques so they are different depending on the type and the size of the population i mean uh, you cannot count uh, elephants the same way you would count uh, little insects so that is why i say that they depend on the size of the population and the type of the population so now let us look at these options um, these techniques of counting species in a population so let us first start with uh, direct counting techniques so in us talking about direct counting it just simply means that we are counting the species one by one so we're just counting the species one by one so for example uh, you can see that in this photograph which i've drawn here so this photograph which i've inserted has got um five elephants right we can directly count them and say this is one two three four five so there are five elements in this photograph so what what i've just done is direct counting so we've got certain techniques whereby we count directly we just we just count one by one how many species are in a population so now this counting would only work if we are counting larger if we are counting a larger a slow moving population so you could you cannot count the elephants if they are if they are smaller because it will be difficult to see them right so for us to use the direct counting techniques we need to have a larger sample our population needs to be large animals so if our species are insects let's say for example like termites like house flies like ants all of those you cannot count them the same way you are counting the elephants that is why i say that it depends on the type of population and the size of the population in this case for us to use direct counting techniques we must have um, animals that are big that are large such as elephants such as rhinoceros such as lions and they must be slow moving as well so we might we, we must be able to stop them and count them if they are moving too fast we cannot be able to count them so direct counting will only work if we have got sessile organisms or slow moving ones when you say that the organisms are sessile it just means that they do not move others do not move at all so now we have got two direct counting techniques we have got aerial photography as well as a census so in aerial photography it just means that we simply take a photograph of a population from above so when you are saying that aerial aerial is just a dimension meaning that you are you are taking a picture from above those who do geography will tell you of an aerial photograph that when you are talking about an aerial photograph you are referring to a photo that is taken above that particular that particular area that you want to 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 to, to observe so in this case when you are talking about aerial photography as a technique of direct counting it just means that we take a picture of the species uh, or, or of the population then we just count the number we just count the number of species in that population just like here in that example you can see that here we have captured a picture this is a picture of elephants this is an aerial photograph of elephants so i can just count them and determine precisely their number in this case there are five ele elephants so we say that this is an aerial photograph and then the other method that is used for direct counting it is uh, known as a census so now talking about a census i'm sure you would have heard it that uh, when a census is being conducted we are actually trying to count a human population we are trying to count how many humans they are in a country in an area or in a yeah 
in a country or in a land or something like that. So we can determine that uh, in South Africa, we have got uh, 61 million people. I'm just giving an example. How do we determine that we use a census? Uh, just means that people go around interviewing people and then they just estimate how many people they are. So these are two techniques of direct counting because they directly count uh, species one by one. And then now we have got indirect counting techniques. So indirect counting techniques are there to estimate the population. So when we are using indirect counting, we do not actually get the actual size of the population. Unlike in the previous example, you could see that we were able to count all the elephants and they count, they summed up to five elephants. And we are sure that there are five elements, elephants in this population because we have counted each and every one of them. But in indirect techniques, we just estimate uh, the, uh, the, 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 we just estimate the, the population size. It's more like it is not an accurate measure. It is just an estimation. It is not really true, but it is closely true. So this te these techniques will work uh, when it is difficult to determine the actual number of organisms. Hence, we just estimate. So, um, for example, if we are taking smaller or fast-moving organisms, so in fast-moving organisms, uh, let's say just for example, let us just take bees, for example. Those bees or any insects, just take insects or bees, just say these are bees, these are bees and they are flying around. We want to try and determine how many bees there are in an area. They are very small and they are many and they move very fast. So now it becomes very difficult to count them directly because you cannot stop them from moving. So we use indirect counting techniques. So indirect counting techniques will all, always apply when you are using a smaller, um, a smaller population or rather insects most of the times and fast moving organisms. So if your organisms move way too fast, it will be very difficult to do direct counting. Hence, we will apply indirect counting techniques. So the first indirect counting technique is known as the mark and recapture method. So in the mark and recapture method, uh, two population samples are taken. So we need to know all these points as I'm explaining them. Please write them down somewhere in case they ask you on the procedure that, um, that is used uh, to do the mark and recapture method. So now two population samples are taken. So we use two population samples. But then how do we actually take the population samples? So now the first sample is marked, then it is released. Let us say, for example, here you have got many insects. Let us assume that you have got ants. So you take them, you take a sample of ants. It doesn't matter how many they are. You just take a lot of ants as, as much as you can. Then you mark them. So the sample is then marked and then you release them back into the habitat. So now what do I mean by marking the, ins, uh, the, the, the smaller animals? So for example, look at these examples of markings that we have. So can you see that you can either write a number on, a, on, a, on an organism, you can put a ring, you can put an electronic tag, you can put a collar on an animal, you can put a number as well, as well as paint. So now do you notice that um, this is the marking which I'm talking about. You mark each and every species that you that you want to count. So now you take a sample, then you mark it. You can either use any of these example of markings. You can use a collar. You can just tie a collar on the animal. Or you can write a number on the animal. Or you can put a tag. Or you can paint it. So now after painting that first sample, what will happen? So now you release it. So just after painting that uh, particular insect, you release it back into its habitat where it stays. So now when you release it back where it stays, why do you do that? You want to release it so that it can be able to go back into its population, right? So now you will give it enough time. So enough time will be allowed for the population to mix. So now, um, now that you have marked a couple of species, let's just say 
you have taken these insects here you can see that these this is an insect and you have painted it let's just say you took uh, 1000 or, or 1000 insects or these beetles and then you paint them and then you release them back into their habitat and then you allow them enough time you allow them enough time so that they can mix they can mix with those ones which were not marked right and then you allow them to die as well you give them enough time so that mortality so that natality so that uh, migration can have an effect on them so if you don't understand these terms i recommend that you watch our previous videos on factors that appear uh, that, that that, 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 that affect population growth so now when you are giving them enough time you want some of them to die you want some of them to give birth and you want some of them to move out and move in so it may be very confusing as to why you do that but then this is just the method of the mark and recapture method so you allow enough time for the population to mix and then now after they've mixed, you will take the second sample. Remember, I've said that you use two samples. So the first sample, you take it and mark it. Then you release it back into the it, its habitat. And then now you allow it to mix. Or when you just, you just give it time, this will just happen on its own time. You don't have to mix it yourself. You just put it back into its habitat. And eventually, it will mix up with the other species and then when it mixes up with the other species uh, some of them will die some of them will give birth some of them will migrate so you just give enough time for those factors to have effect so now the second sample is then captured so you now take another sample after giving enough time let us just say you take two years after marking the, the first sample after marking this sample of these uh, of these beetles and then after two years you just take another sample and then now you determine the number of marked so you determine the number of marked the number of marked uh, animals and then you determine the number of unmarked organisms as well so now uh, you take the second sample years later after mortality natality and migration has occurred right and then when you take them you will try and see how many of those species still have the contact paint then you write that number down let's say remember that in this case i have marked a thousand beetles and then i have released them right and then after some time after some time after some time i will collect another sample in the same area right and then now i will count how many still have got that paint and how many do not have a paint so i will count all of them so you count the number of marked and the number of unmarked organisms and then mark the unmarked oh this is just means that this just means that after counting um after counting the number of marked and unmarked let us just say here you have captured the 1000 beetles and then now after some time and after all those factors have taken place now you count and you notice that there are um, there are 200 organisms that are still marked 200 organisms that are still marked or that still have got the med the mark and then you see that in the sample that you have collected there are eight uh, let's just say there are eight two five zero that are unmarked in the sample that you have collect collected so now in the um, on the sample that i've collected you can see that some of them are not marked some of them are marked right so now what do you do do you want to get more benefits from this channel from only 20 rands per month you too could become a member and get exclusive benefits and even private tutoring click join on our channel page to find out you now mark those that are unmarked so it means that you will take these 8250 species and then you paint them as well and then you release them back into the into the into the wild or into their habitat and then now you use this formula to be able to calculate the population size so this is just an index that is used to calculate the population size so now how does this index work
So now uh, here, in this index, you are given n is equals to m multiplied by c over r, whereby n, it is the population that you are trying to estimate. So this is the population size that you're trying to estimate. You're trying to find out how many species do we have in that area. Those are small species, right? You cannot do direct counting on them. So you use the mark and recapture method, which uses indirect counting. And then now M, M is representing the number of animals captured and marked in the first sample. For this example, remember that I captured 1,000. In the first place, I've captured 1,000 of these beetles, and then I've marked them. So in this case, my M is equals to 1,000. Multiplied by C, C represents the number of individuals captured in the second sample. So this is the number of individuals captured in the second sample. In this case, you can say that in my second sample, I have captured 200 plus 8,250. That is more like 8,550. So I have captured all of these and I found out that 200 are marked, 8,250 are not marked, right? And then now you say over R. R represents the number of individuals marked. In the second sample so you can see that in the second sample I had 8250 unmarked organisms so now I need to mark them so in this case my R is equals to 8250 so for this example I would say that the estimated population size is equals to M which is the number of animals captured in the first sample was 1000 and then I say multiplied by C, which is the number of individuals captured in the second sample. These were captured in the second sample. There were 8,550. And then this is all over. They are, they are representing the number of individuals marked in the second sample. In this case, I will mark these that are not marked, which is 8,250. So you just put that in your calculator. This will be your estimated population size. So this is how you determine the population size using the mark and recapture method. So this is an estimation. Remember, it is not anything accurate. So it is just you trying to estimate or trying to, uh, to approximate the number of, um, the number of, species in a population or the size of the population so now remember in direct counting you can count them one by one and you can determine the actual number of the species and the population but when it comes to indirect counting you are always estimating and then now there are certain precautions that you must make sure that you adhere to uh, when you are um, using the the mark and recapture method so now since this method is an approximation you need to take certain precautions and considerations before you use it so now the following precautions must be taken to ensure reliable results so now to ensure a reliable results what precautions must be taken so the sample that you're going to be using must be large enough meaning that you should not just capture um, a fewer organisms Remember, these are fast-moving organisms, so they can move very fast and emigrate, and then you just find out that the, the, the species that you've marked have already escaped and went away. So it will be very, very, very hard to, 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 to determine the population size there or to estimate the population size. So your sample must be large enough to truly represent a population. And then the markings that you must use must remain for the entire period of the procedure. Remember that in the mark and the capture method, I've said that you allow enough time. Remember this point, we say that we allow enough time for the population to mix and these factors to have an effect on the population. So now, if we are going to use a marking that does not last, let us say that this paint fades away easily. Let us just say after a week of rain and all those weather conditions, this paint will fade off easily then that will make your results to be unreliable because you want this paint to stay and stay and stay and stay until you collect the second sample. 
Hence, we have said, we are saying that here, the markings that you use must remain for the entire period of the procedure so that you can get reliable results. And the markings must be suitable for the type of organism and must not harm or interfere with its movement and behavior. So now what you would not want to do it is to take something like um, a, a collar. You can see this collar here that is on this animal. This is the collar here. And then tie that collar on a small insect. That insect is going to die. Yes, because this is a marking that is harmful to the organism. So you must use a suitable marking. You should not use a marking that will cause harm to the organism. You should not use a marking that can potentially stop the organism from moving and that can alter or affect its behavior. So now your marking must not affect the animal's behavior at all. The animal must be still free to move back and forth, must be still free to feed, must be still free to do each and everything that it needs to for, for it to maintain its biological body in, the, in a sense. So now you should use a suitable marking uh, f uh, depending on the type of organism that you are investigating uh, or the type of organism that you are marking. So it must not harm or interfere with the movement and behavior. So the marked organisms should be released into the environment close to the site of capture and be given enough time to mix. I already emphasized the one of enough time that you must give enough time such that they can give birth, such that they can die, such that they can migrate in or out. So now you must give it enough time. And when you are releasing the marked organisms, you must release them into the environment that is close to the site of capture. I cannot go and um, let's say right now I'm in KZN and then I, I capture animals in Limpopo and then I come back here and write the results here. And uh, okay, let's just say, for example, I capture, I take animals or insects from Limpopo and then I bring them to KZN. I mark them and then I bring the, I, 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 uh, I release them back to Limpop and then now after two years and I try to, 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 to do the population size thing, that would not work at all because I, my marking place where I'm marking these insects is very far from their habitat. So my results would be very unreliable. So for me to be able to do this sort of investigation, I need to, to mark those organisms while I'm in Limpopo because I know that I would just release them back into their habitat that is closer to me so that I can continue doing the, 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 the research and whatnot. Yes, so the distance also matters for this case. So this is known as the mark and recapture method. So now the second method of indirect counting is known as the quadrats. So quadrats are quite simple to understand. There is also an indirect counting uh, technique because um, you, you are estimating, you are not counting directly how many species you have in a population. So now quadrats refer to square frames. So quadrats are square frames, meaning that they've got a shape of a square. I've put here a photograph or an image that uh, shows here this is a quadrat. It is a square frame that is made of plastic, wood or string. And then those frames are placed randomly anyway in an area containing the organism. Let us say now in this area, I would like to count the number of termites in the area or rather I would like to count the number of ants in the area. I would just put an, a quadrat on. Yes, I'll just put a quadrat in the area. So now when I put this quadrat in the area, how am I going to determine the population size using that? So now population size using a quadrat is given by this formula. Population size is equals to the average number of individuals per quadrat multiplied by the surface area of land over the quadrat surface area. So let's say, for example, this quadrat, uh, let's just say this is my quadrat. And then this quadrat has got uh, two meters here. It is given two meters by four meters. And then now I just say that in each and every quadrat, I've noticed that I've got this number of individuals. So in this case, these are um, 
So these are 11, these are 11 individuals in this what in, in this quadrant and then now this is the surface area of the quadrant so now to determine the population size i'll just say population size is equals to the number the average number of individuals per quadrant in this case i've got 11 individuals in this quadrant then i multiply by the surface area of the land so this whole land let's just assume that all of this land it is very big let's just say it is 1000 square meters i'll just say this is 1000 square meters and then this is over the quadrant surface area in this case the quadrant that i've used is a square right it is given by a length of four meters and a breadth of two meters and the width of two meters i mean so it means that the area of this quadrant the surface area of the quadrant is going to be eight meters squared so in this way i will be able to determine the population size so you can see that uh, the population size that i will determine here will not really be accurate it will be just somewhat approximate it's just an estimation so we are just learning this as an estimation there are certain scientists who worked hard on this so we are just learning it to estimate the population size so now there are also precautions that need to be taken to be able to ensure reliability when using the quadrants in direct counting technique so now the precautions that must be taken several quadrant throws samples should be made to determine the average number of individuals per quadrant so here you must use many quadrants you should not use only one quadrant to be able to determine the the, 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 the the size of the population so now try to use as many quadrants as you can so that your your, your population size may be at least um it, it may be at least accurate a bit and then quadrant samples must be done randomly throughout the total area so it means that if i put a quadrant here i must also put a quadrant far away randomly i should not just put them at a specific place or at a place that i think is suitable i just put the quadrants anyway randomly i just scatter them those do you want to get more benefits from this channel from only 20 rands per month you too could become a member and get exclusive benefits and even private tutoring click join on our channel page to find out square frames i just scatter them and then now uh, what else this process should be repeated several times and the average number of organisms per quadrant must be calculated so you should repeat this process as many times as you can put as many quadrants as you can and repeat and use this formula many times and then find the average using that formula but then you less likely do that but then just know that it is a precaution that needs to be taken when you um when you are using the uh, the, the quadrant method so in conclusion what i would like to say that when you are counting or when you are determining the population size we have got two main type of techniques we have got a direct counting techniques and then we have got indirect counting techniques and then when i'm talking about direct counting techniques we talked about aerial photography as well as as well as a census we have talked about aerial photography as well as a census as well as a census and then when i'm talking about indirect counting techniques we have talked about the mark and the recapture method the mark and recapture method as well as the quadrant method so in a question that asks you uh give the types of direct counting techniques you're going to talk about aerial photography and you're going to take up about sensors remember aerial photography you just take a picture then you start counting if they ask you about indirect counting techniques you are just going to tell them about the mark and recapture method whereby you take two samples you mark the first sample you release it back into the wild you allow enough time for all those factors to have to take place such as natality mortality as well as migration and then in the and then you use the the formula to be able to to to, to calculate the the population size and then the other indirect counting technique remember we've talked about the quadrants whereby you use a square frame 
and then you use that square frame you just place it anywhere randomly do not also forget the precautions when you are using this method and don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well thank you so much for watching don't forget to stay tuned for our next video